Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Tony. So, um, is this on or? Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Do you hear anything? Okay, good. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, about the tool for inspecting um, attributed syntax trees, and it's uh, joint work with uh, my master's thesis students, uh, Joel Lindholm and Johan Tosberg, who implemented this tool. And uh, I'd also like to say special thanks to <coughs> my PhD student, Jesper Erkvist, who has improved the tool since we wrote the paper, so I'll show you a little more features than we had in the paper. Uh, so, um, the idea there then is to inspect the attributed syntax trees, and this is for just that attribute grammars, like uh, Tony mentioned. So, in attribute grammars, you start, you write the compiler by, well, uh, you have the syntax tree, and then you simply add properties to uh, different nodes in the tree. And these uh, properties, called attributes, are defined using equations. So, it's a declarative way of, of implementing a compiler. Uh, and I'll show you two different uh, cases here. So one is a very tiny calculator language that we use in teaching. And the other one is a full Java compiler that we implemented using just that. So let me go directly to the, to the demo here. Oh, ah, the, <laughs> uh, the resolution of the screen is, is uh, all, all changed, but never mind. Uh, so, this is a small project for a compiler for a small calculator language. So, let me just first show you an example in this language. So, uh, you have let construct, let x equals 2 in uh, some other expression, so nested let. Now, if you look at this example, actually, y there uh, isn't defined, right? So, I I this uh, program has a compile time error in it because y is not uh, defined. So let's see. Uh, well let's also take a quick look at the source code of such a compiler. So I'll just show you one file here with the name analysis. So this is typically what just that code looks like. So you have uh, synthesized and inherited attributes, and you have equations defining the values of those attributes. And we can note here that there is one attribute here called decal, which uh, all uses of identifiers have, and it points to a declaration. Of, of an identifier. So it's a reference attribute pointing to another node in the tree. All right, so uh, let's see if I can find the right window here. Okay, so here's the command line. So this is the, the same um, project and let's just build the, the compiler here for this small calculator language. So now the scanner is generated, the parser, the attribute grammar is, uh, evaluation is generated, and we get a compiler.jar as the result. So let's run that on our small example. Uh, intro. Oh, sorry, should be compiler.jar here. So we run compiler.jar on this example. Just to, to show you what the, this particular small compiler does, it just reads in the, the text and it, it pretty prints it and it prints out the error messages. So now let's run this compiler again, but using our tool uh, for, for visualizing the syntax tree. So I'll just fire up the tool and um, uh, it will ask me, okay, wha what, what compiler do you want to run on? So I'll say compiler.jar and I'll give it the example, uh, example file here. So, so now the, um, uh, the tool that is called Dr. Ast, it means display reflected AST. It uh, runs the compiler and it, it uh, gets the root using reflection and it uh, visualizes the abstract syntax tree for the program. So let me zoom in here a little bit. Uh, actually, we can see the program here, but the font is a bit small maybe, but it's the same program that we see there. So now we can, we can look at the different nodes here, and uh, uh, if I click on one of them, I get the attribute values over here. So the screen resolution is a little bit problematic here. I see very little <laughs> as compared to having a normal screen. 
So anyway, we, we see, for example, one of, of the attributes here is the identifier, which is X. And uh, let's see, there is um, also an an attribute called, uh, the attribute called decal that I talked about earlier, I have it here. So if I click on this attribute, I get a reference here from this ID use to the, the, the correct declaration, which is this one over here. So I can explore the attributes and the values in this uh, interactive way. Uh, I could also uh, perhaps would like to see some of the attributes inside the nodes so not just see the syntax tree there, but also some of the attributes directly. So I could do that by, let me see. Saying that we want to include ID use nodes and we want to show uh, the get ID attribute. here, so I don't see really what I'm doing. Do you want to put the last what is that? I think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now e everything, the font, oops. <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go again. So let's see. So I'll try to uh, write this up again. So I'll ask it to show the get ID attribute. <coughs> no? Yeah, it's so it's so small I can't hardly <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's really, uh, I have to take off my glasses. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, so now I got uh, the ID, the ID um, attributes here. I can see which one. This is the Y, use of a Y, use of an X, use of a Z, etc. And as you remember, the Y uh, wasn't declared, right? So if I click on the decal attribute for that one, it goes up to another node here called unknown decal. So this is an, a higher order attribute that is uh, computed from the program root here. So this way I can go on and <coughs> explore, explore the program, but uh, I think I'll go over to the other example because, uh, yeah, I don't have so much time in this demo. Uh, so let's see, I can find the menu here. So let's look at, uh, uh a Java compiler instead. And here we have actually a special version of this tool that is uh, made is specifically, so it has a, a few more bells and whistles. And this is for, for looking at uh, a Java compiler implemented using just as, so it's called extendj. And uh, over here, I, I it automatically constructs a small example program for me and it shows the syntax tree for it here. So now the font is <laughs> too small again, so but it says public class main here, and uh, we can see the syntax tree here. So, so this can be very useful for someone who wants to, to uh, do extensions on the Java compiler, because reading the grammar, reading the all the attributes, grammar definitions, it's, it's a huge thing. But here you can construct small examples and explore what the grammar and attributes looks like. And what you also can do here is then change this program. So let me, for example, add um, a field here and a method. Uh, let's see, void and and I'll increment or I'll set the field to something. 
like this, and now I rebuild the ASP, and I, I see the complete tree for the, for the new program here. And if I zoom in over here, I can see the um, assignment that I just added. So here, for example, we have the variable access. And again, this compiler is built, organized in a similar way as this very tiny uh, example language I showed. So it also has a, a decal attribute for, for the um, variable access here. Now in JSTAD, not all attributes are evaluated. Uh, they're all only evaluated if they're needed for some computation. So in this case, uh, the decal attribute here is not yet computed, but I can simply right click here to compute it and I get, I, I can see where it points to in, in the tree. Now let me add one more statement here. So I'll add uh, system.outprintline uh, hello. So let's look at this ASP. Now you see uh, we got very, very many nodes here. And this is of course because when I compile this program, the compiler has to read in the system, the class file for, for, um, for system and it includes a lot of methods. So of course I could uh, zoom in here and try to find something, but uh, it's, it's hopeless really to, to try to look and, and uh, find things. Okay, this is a method declaration. Uh, what is that? It's for the uh, method load library. Well, okay. So obviously I have to do something about this. So what we have is a filtering mechanism. So I can say exclude everything but the program. So now I get only the root and then all other <coughs> nodes are collapsed here in a cluster. And then I have some mechanisms here for, for including all the compilation units that um, uh, correspond to source files. So it says include a compilation unit when from source. Of from source here is an attribute in the grammar, which is true for those uh, compilation units that are parsed in from source, and it's false for those that are parsed in from class files. So if I apply this filter, I get something reasonable again. So uh, we have then the, the uh, source file here, and over here is the cluster of all the class files and nodes. And uh, if I go down here to this last statement, let's see. So we have um, a type access here. This is uh, the access of system, and then the var access here should be out. Yes, it's out. And then up here we have a method access, which is the print line, and so on. And of course, again, I can I can look at the declaration of this of this um, node here. So I compute it, and I see that it goes um, goes up to this cluster of, of collapsed nodes. So it's somewhere in the, in the class uh, the ASP for the class files. Uh, I think I'll stop there. So there. One or two minutes for questions. Thank you.